Hi guys, welcome to Golang Tutorial Part 3. Today we're going to be looking at web applications in Go. Now one of the cool things about Golang, uh, especially when dealing with web apps, is that unlike Python or uh, Ruby or Java, Scala, etc, etc, we don't need to use frameworks. And in fact it's actually quite idiomatic to not use a framework in Go. Though there are a few that you can use if you want things to be a little simple and if you want to maintain a specific pattern for your files. So we're going to actually build a very simple web application in Go. We're going to use uh, text files for our databases. So rather than using an actual SQL database, we're just going to store everything in a text file. And we're going to just read from the text file and output. Um, in our next tutorial, we'll start talking about how to add those databases and we'll start adding more and more to the app. So let's get started. So of course like always we're going to create our package. Our package is going to be main. One of the most uh, useful libraries in Go is the actual library that allows us to run an HTTP server and that's net.http. So in our function main if we just want to deploy a server all we have to do is type in http.listen and serve and if we want it at say port 8000 that's what we pass into it so we pass 8000 and nil into it and if we were to run this so here we go we've got a 404 page not found and that's because we have nothing on our server so let's actually rectify that one of the things that we need to consider when creating a web application is what exactly it is that we want to serve on our web application now in this case we want to have pages and our pages are going to have a title and they're going to have a body. It's very simple. So we're going to create a page struct and our page struct is going to have a title which is of string and a body which is of type of a slice with bytes in it. Now the reason that we're using a slice of bytes is because we need it for when we read it into our IO. So let's actually import our IO library here and let's import FMT. So first let's create a method for our page that allows us to save our data into our text files. So this function is just going to be called save and we're tying it to page so it's because it's a method. And we'll create a variable called f. This will take in our title concatenated with .txt to create the text file. Then we're going to just return uh, writing the file. So we're using our IO library to write the file. We're using F to write our actual file name and then we're going to pass the body and that's going to be the text inside the file. And then we're passing this 0600. So basically we're creating the permissions to allow us to read and write from the file. So now we need to make a load function. So we need a function that loads our text files. So this method is not tied, or this is not a method rather, this is a function. It's called load and we're just passing a string into it. It's going to output our uh, page and it's going to output our error. We'll create a, another variable called f and f is going to be equal to our title concatenated with .txt again. We're reading in the file and we're taking out the body and if there's an error we're going to take out the error as well. So now we need to handle that error. So if the error does not equal nil, meaning if the error exists, we're just going to return nil and we're going to return the error so that we can further uh, debug it if it does happen. Then we're just going to return our page with title equaling title and body equal body and we're going to return nil. Finally we need to create a function to allow us to put all of this onto our server and display it. So our function is called view and we're passing in our HTTP response writer and we're passing in our HTTP request. This function is allowing us to basically uh, define where the title is going to be. So the title is going to come after the test uh, part in the URL. If our text file is named test for example, then the test file will appear after the test URL at the test.html. Then we're going to load this file. So we're going to call our load function here. And we are going to populate our HTML page using this little uh, 
quote unquote template that we've created here with the f printf. And we're passing in the response writer here, and that's going to be the IO writer which is doing this. Finally, we need to call our main function. So we're going to create a variable called p, and it's going to be of our type of page. And it's going to have a title of test and a body of welcome to the test page. Then we're just going to save p. Then we're going to use this HTTP handle function to call our view function on the test node of the URL. Finally, we're going to uh, actually deploy the server. So let's run this and see what happens. So here it's connecting to the internet. It creates a test file and inside the test file it says welcome to the test page. If we go to our localhost 8000 test test, here we go. And here's our page. Welcome to the test page with title of test. So we can do some pretty cool things with this. So for example, if we want to create a, another text file, let's call this, um, I don't know, edit.txt. So now we've created an edit file. So if we navigate over to edit, there we go. We have an edit file called edit. This is the edit page. So we could in theory, implement infinite pages this way, but this is not really an interactive uh, way of writing a web app. That is to say that while we can put out pages, uh, we can't really add any kind of functionality to those pages because we're just storing them in text files. So let's actually build on what we have here and let's actually bring in the templating agent for Go. So let's actually remove all of our FMT stuff here, which is right here. We don't need this anymore. So let's remove this. And let's remove our FMT import. And let's actually bring in our HTML template import. So Go has its own templating language. That's very easy to use. So we're going to create an HTML file. We're going to call it test. It's going to have an H1. And inside this H1, we're going to put two curly brackets. We're going to put a body, or a period rather. And we're going to type in title. And then we're going to have a div. And inside of our div, we're going to have a period. And it's going to have the body in it. So basically, this is what our page is going to look like. Now this is very simple, but we're going to expand upon it. All right. So now we need to tell our view function to render this template. So how do we do that? Well, actually, it's quite simple. So we're loading our page in here. For our template, we're going to create a variable called t. And of course, it's going to have an error as well. And we're going to call the template.parseFiles function. Then we're going to parse the test.html file, and then we're going to execute this. And we're going to pass our w and p into it. So if we save this, run it. So here we're now running into a problem. So because we've changed our body into bytes in our program, and we did not change it back into a string, we're getting the bytes on the page. So now if we edit our... So now to correct this, all we have to do is edit our template. So to do this, we use printf. So this is basically just the printf function that's built into the templating language. And then we're going to do it like we do any other printf statement. Just a percent %s, which will turn it into a string. We save it. If we reload this, there we go. Welcome to the test page. So say we want to add actual functionality. Now we've basically, we've rendered our template. <coughs> and we can render our pages. So if we go to our, this is the edit page. And if we go back to our test page, all of it works very similar to how it worked before. Now we're just using an HTML file. So that really hasn't changed much. However, if we make multiple different um, handler functions, or rather view functions here, well, we can handle different templates, rather. So if we create a function called edit, 
So now we've created a function called edit. It's very similar to our function view. The reason we've created this edit function is so that we can actually manipulate a, another template. So we're going to Im implement another template here, but first, before we do that, we want to connect the two templates so that we don't have to jump around. So we want to create a link from our main page to our edit page. So here we go. This is how we do that. So now we're going to create an edit file. And inside this edit file, we're going to make it so that we can actually edit our text. So we want to basically, basically this is how it's going to work. We want the text to display onto our HTML. And then we want to be able to click a button, which brings us to an editing form. And then we can change that text, and then it'll get resaved into the text file. So let's do that. So here's our editing template. As you can see here, we create a form. And the form has an action which sends us to something else that we have not implemented into our Go file yet. We have our text area, which allows us to edit the text area. We're bringing that in with our printf and we're attaching it to the body. Then we have an input, so we have a button which allows us to save everything. So if we run this, let's take a look at what we have. So now we have an edit button. And if I open this up, it'll go to page not found. And that's because we haven't implemented it into our main function yet. We need to add another handle function. And there we go. Now this should work. See, now we're in the edit page. We can type in stuff like, hello, welcome to the page. And if we hit save, nothing will happen. It'll just quit. So now we want to add that functionality, the save functionality. So how do we do that? Well, we need to create a save function. Now, because we already have a save method, uh, there won't be any problems because it's a method. This is a function. So we're creating a save function. Okay, so here's our save function. It starts out similar to everyone else. So we bring out our save path here. Then we import our body uh, form value. So basically what this is doing is it's taking the, form, the, the value from the actual form that we've inputted. And then it's replacing that with the title and the body. So it's replacing all that and then resaving it back into the text file. And then it's redirecting us back to our original test pages. So now we need to create a handler here for this as well. And there we go. If we run this, we can actually now edit and save anything in these text files. Oh, yeah. There's one little change that we need to make here. We need to convert this to a byte format. All right, so there was an error. We had our name as a capital B body instead of a lowercase body. Now if we reload the page and we say type something in here. It should save. And there we go. So now we're actually saving and changing everything in here. And if we look at the text file, you can see that we're actually reading and writing out of this text file. So this is pretty cool, though it's not very efficient if you want to expand this to multiple users rather than just one. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. In our next tutorial, we will expand upon what we've done here. And we will start to talk about how we can implement a database and how we can do some more interesting things with our uh, web applications. Anyway, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please like and subscribe. Uh, feel free to comment if you have any questions. And if you have any uh, grievances with us, feel free to dislike. Anyway, I hope you guys have a good day.